Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft Retail and our Warlock playthrough. Today I'm going to head over here and try to take on Incendius one more time. A few of you guys gave me some pretty decent tips on how we might better manage these hard elite fights, including soul stoning ourselves and having a health stone at the ready. So we're going to do that. Uh, this could probably go somewhere. Somebody pointed out that I could have Summon Demon out instead of having all of these individual summons. Summon Demon should have a drop down. Here we go. There it is. Uh, this is the one I need to remember that makes the summon free and reduces the casting time. We're probably going to have to use that. Uh, Unending Resolve would probably be a good cooldown to use along with Dark Pact. Voidwalker can come off. Ah, uh, Fear might be useful and Health Funnel we still need. Uh, we have the Health... No, the Soul Stone. Do I have to... Okay, no, I'm, I'm Soul Stoned. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the problem is healing my healing my pet pulls so much aggro onto me. That's the real problem with this uh, approach here. I can drain life to get back some of our health, but yeah, I guess this is working. Sort of. It's not optimum DPS. Oh, that's not optimum at all. Oh, we're stunned. Perfect. Perfect. If I can get out of the fire, that'd be awesome. Uh, nope, that's going to be a death. Unless we can get him back up here really quick. Yeah, it's just unfortunate I can't really cast anything else besides keeping myself and my Felguard alive. Uh, and here he comes. He's ticked off again. Let's do Dark Pack to keep us alive here. Inevitably, this might work. I don't want to jinx it just yet, but we're doing pretty good on health. I realize I've had the shittiest camera angle this whole time, sorry about that. Is searching a while expand? Sure, why not? You know what? Go ahead, World of Warcraft, expand our search to other expansions. Hey, we did it, guys. The good news is we did it. Imprisoned in the old Durnhold Keep arena is a being comprised of pure mercury. The Forsaken have dubbed it D-1000. Kill the D-1000 and claim your prize. Uh, okay. Well, we had a random dungeon here. Let's just go with it. Five-man dungeons are some of my favorite content. I used to level up characters exclusively by grinding five-man dungeons. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, this is the Eye of Azara. A dungeon that maybe I've done a handful of times. All right, okay, cool, cool. We have a bear tank, a torn druid healing, a, another warlock, and a hunter. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like throwing in these dungeons in each episode is just a good way to kind of break up the questing monotony. I hope you guys don't mind. Let me know how you feel about it. It is a little bit of a departure from how I typically run series. But she will not be disappointed. the thing that I realized is that I usually will read all the quests and we do a lot of quests. And in World of Warcraft, I've kind of come to accept that the more I read the quests, the more I kind of dislike the writing. Which isn't to say that the overall story directions are bad. 
It's just that when you get down into the nitty gritty of the actual quest writing, sometimes it is bad. And when it is bad, I found that that's kind of something that triggers me. And it takes me out of the immersion, and it takes me out of the game, and it just kind of puts me in a bad mood. After reading probably thousands of hours of WoW quest text, I, I've kind of come to realize why maybe most people choose not to engage with it. And they just choose to engage with the story and the world in different ways. Uh, I'm really coming to learn that, and I don't know if I'm going to stop reading quests. Unless it's stuff that like I've read all of it before. Uh, but I'm probably going to read less quest. Probably skim read more. Just so that I don't drive myself crazy. The, these these mobs might have like mechanics that I don't know. Uh, as a matter of fact, since weird stuff is happening right now, I'm kind of like sure that they do. We'll try to keep ourselves alive here so as not to be a burden on the rest of the group. But yeah, so I think I'm going to start breaking things up a little bit, reading the quest a little bit less intently, like, just kind of doing the overview. Maybe I'll skim it and I'll give my own little overview of what we are trying to do with the quest. Unless they're really interesting and seem decently written, and then I'll read them, but it has been something that has kind of been deteriorating my enjoyment, when what I really want to do is get in and do some fun content with you guys, and stuff like this might be, might be a little more enjoyable, maybe. But you guys let me know, I, I'd love to hear from you. And the other cool thing is like, some of these dungeons, like maybe I've seen this once, I honestly don't remember ever doing this. It's not anything that sticks in my memory. Uh, so that tells me it could have been from Legion onward. It's probably a BFA dungeon if I had to guess. Uh, because I did basically no five men's in BFA and I didn't do all the five men's in Shadowlands either. Uh, the last two expansions in the game, I have not enjoyed. Not enough to stick around and run a ton of five men content or mythic content or raid content like I used to. Legion was the last time that I was really into raiding and had a raiding guild and enjoyed that. And ever since then I have never gotten back into it, uh, which also kind of stops me from running a bunch of the five-man content at Endgame. Because if you're not going to raid, there's no reason to jump into those runs or do mythics in my mind. Or at least not in my mind, but for me. For me, if I'm not going to raid, I, I don't tend to do a lot of five-man content either. I know everyone's different. Some people like to exclusively Mythic Plus and just do five men's. And I'd, I'd love to do that too if I had a static team. But I don't, because I don't have any friends. Sad as that is. Not any that play World of Warcraft, at least. But barely any at all. And I am really liking pressing the buttons on this class, so what better place to press your buttons than a dungeon? Um, stuff still dies pretty quickly it seems, but you know, coming up against bosses is fun. Get to do our rotation a little bit longer and really get into the swing of things, see how many imps we can get out at one time. It seems like this one is going to be a little bit of a longer dungeon than some of the revamped uh, classic ones that we've done. Probably shouldn't have hard cast this. Yeah, it's not going to go off. Oh, it might go off. There it goes. Maybe next episode we'll start off uh, trying Destruction, and once we get a quick handle on those buttons, we'll jump into a dungeon as Destro and see how that goes. I'm interested to see how the other specs of this class play out, because I've really, really enjoyed Demonology so far.
All right, apparently we are skipping this Arcanist. I remember this. Does it, This worm goes underground and does stuff. I remember this area. So maybe this was something from Legion. Mm -hmm. I could probably find out. Or not. Dungeon journal, maybe? Continue the ritual. I will handle these fools. Hmm. Sure you guys will let me know. It's probably, maybe, I don't know, I, I, it's either between BFA and Legion. Fry land walkers. Uh, probably didn't want to be in the water for that one, I guess. I don't want to double that up, I don't think. Okay, that destroyed the land. That was probably not the smartest place for me to be. Can you feel the winds? They come for you. Not really sure what's going on over here. Some kind of summoning or containment. Yeah, I think we have to kill these Hydra first, I believe, and just kind of clear the area, right? Because he's going to go underground and move. Pretty sure that's what's going to happen. We'll try to pay attention and spot any mechanics that are going on. Alright, I think he's going to go in. Not soon enough to get our proc off. Oh, we lost our Felguard again. I have been really bad about paying attention to my pet being out. Let's get him up before we have a boss fight here. I can't tell if he's going to clear the rest of these guys. He kind of seems like he wants to pull. Which would probably be fine if we did. Uh, well, we have another Hydra incoming here. Guess we might want to at least take him out. Double Warlocks. Uh, both Demo. Bunch of imps. Very cool looking. At first I thought those were all ours, and I was like, oh yeah, we have another warlock. Alright, we are going in on the fight here, and okay, we're doing a little whirlwind thing. The wind is moving us. Uh, oh, moving us through poison nonetheless. Begins to submerge, okay. Uh, I guess I don't really want him to pull us to him. Alright, we're moving all over the place here. I'm gonna pop some armor here. Keep us sustained as we run back in. Not a lot of safe places to be right now. But hey, we got it.
Lots of murlocs here, I'm realizing. It's kind of a murloc themed place. Obviously, it's probably more Naga themed, but we, uh, we do have a lot of murlocs. They get their time to shine here. That's good for them. Oh, and some goblin slaves. Perfect. I don't know why the slaves would fight us or why we would want to kill the slaves. But, okay, you know, it's, it's World of Warcraft. Not much else we can do. Uh, not having any instant cast besides procs is kind of difficult when it comes to mechanics like this. You're not even a boss, are you? Nope. Yeah, see, I just have to kind of move around for a minute, and during that time we can't really cast. I guess Affliction would be the spec you'd want to go with if you had a fight with a lot of movement. So what's always interested me about DPS classes, even though I've never really played one, is I've always thought it would be interesting to learn the ins and outs of a class to a point where you can, and most of you guys can probably do this with your classes, where you can, on, a, on an encounter-by-encounter encounter basis, you will change your spec. It's always seemed like a lot of mental gymnastics to me, but I can see how once you really enjoy a class, and you start to learn it, where you'd be able to make those decisions, and uh, it would probably benefit your gameplay a lot. Because uh, it seems like they do design the specs to be swapped through uh, based on the encounter, and based on the situation. Uh, I should not stand in that, probably. Would be... Oh, great. Lots of stuff happening. Let's fire off our instant cast while we have them. I really don't want to get hit by any of this, I'm assuming. Getting some items here. It's an upgrade. It's an upgrade. Alright, looks like one boss to go. We could probably mount up here. You know, like everyone else is doing. Oh, we totally missed that. There we go. Okay, we're going to clear out the Naga here first, around the Wrath of Ajara. I guess with all the Azara references, it probably should have been pretty obvious that this was a BFA dungeon, huh? Yeah, I think basically anything that I am totally unfamiliar with is going to be a B. Although, you know what, in Draenor, I didn't do a lot of five-man stuff either. So if we hit a Draenor five-man, I probably wouldn't be too familiar with that. I keep talking about it, but I will get a DPS meter going for these runs now that we've kind of decided we're going to do more of them. Not really to see, like, where other people are making mistakes. I don't want it to be a tool for us to um, kind of talk badly about other people's performance. I want it as a tool for us to talk badly about my performance uh, so that we can get better. But not as a tool to critique other people uh, that we happen to group with. And yeah, that's that's it, guys. That's five bosses down. That was actually fun. It was enjoyable. It was a pretty, a very pretty place to be, besides all the things that wanted to kill us. And we have a talent point.
From the shadows, Dreadbite causes the target to take 20% additional Shadow Flame damage from you for the next 12 seconds. Soul Strike is another ability. Command your Felguard to strike into the soul, dealing damage. Uh, summon a Vile Fiend to fight for you for the next 15 seconds. I don't really know what a Vile Fiend is. But that sounds cool. I I'm more inclined to go with the passive talents, just because, you know, less buttons to hit. And at this point, uh, we don't have to worry about being super optimal. Uh, let's see. I want to get around you. Alright, let's Soulstone up. And let's remember our lesson we learned with the last one was that Drain Life is probably going to be the way to go after about the middle of the fight. Ooh, we were out of line of sight there for a minute. Uh, that could be trouble for our Felguard here if we can't get him healed back up. Looks like he's going to be okay. And we're not pulling aggro yet somehow, so that's that's good. Let's try to get some DPS going. I don't want to jinx it, but this one is going much smoother than Incendius. Uh, whoop. Oh, we got him right at the end. He Maybe he enraged? Yeah, he suddenly just killed our Felguard. Alright, well, that's good. Let's get our Felguard back out before we run back and turn this in. Uh, we could, we could just hearth and fly out. That's an option. I think we're okay just to run it. Assuming I can get up here. Now I'm kind of hoping this will either finish the East Point Tower story chapter or it will give us a follow up that will finish the story chapter. And then I guess we have to go do this quest at the Azure Load Mine, which I thought was just going to be a little side quest. It turns out maybe there are no little side quests uh, in the remade zones. Maybe they wrapped everything into the story chapter somehow and there's not anything that we can skip. So uh, that will be the next thing we do if this doesn't chain into anything else nearby. There we go, yeah, East Point Tower, uh, done, cleared, finished. Oh, we could we could have flown, it probably would have been faster to fly. I often forget that they put so many flight points uh, all over the place here. But yeah, let's, let's head over here, we're gonna wrap this up, and then I'm kind of undecided what to do next. I really want to avoid this Rambo quest, but... If we want to continue just into our Rathi Highlands, that might be something that we have to do. So, we will see. But yeah, that'll be the first, that'll be the last time, maybe the first and last time that we'll skip a side quest, because yeah, when I skipped this one, we could have done this a long time ago, when I skipped it, I, I was certain that 
It was just a little side quest that was an optional thing to do while we were in the area, but uh, that po turned out to be wrong. I guess the other thing that kind of led me to believe that is like, they don't really put these in the order that you're going to come to them, because we would have done the Azure Load Mine stuff as one of the first things we did in the zone. Did we get dismounted? Oh god. Oh, the retail dismount. I need to get our flying mount. I don't know what I'm doing. I keep saying I'm going to do it, and then I keep forgetting. It's just, it's not really natural for me to have a flying mount in these zones, so I just don't think about it all the time. I think about it when I'm getting dismounted, essentially. Like, oh yeah, we could be flying over some of this stuff. And by some of it, I mean we basically could be flying over everything and just dropping right into where we need to be. So maybe I need to make myself a little sticky note and get to Ogre Mart at some point uh, before we go any further here. They give you so many things, just give them to you for basically nothing, that part of me wishes that, you know, they would just give you the, fl the base levels of riding and flying when you hit the level to unlock them, as opposed to just arbitrarily making you go back to town and do anything. It used to be that there was a cost, right? There was going to be a big cost associated, so you'd go to the vendor, you'd drop a bunch of money. It was an actual interaction. Now the cost is negligible, so I feel like just letting you unlock them when you hit that level the way you would any other ability would be just fine for retail. So yeah, we're going into the mine here. We're gonna just kind of make a run for it, I guess. Oh yeah, we're, work uh, we're working all the way back. So, oh, these guys are friendly, that's right. It's the, uh, it's the miners that are wrapped up that are not friendly, but they're wrapped up so they can't really do anything, can they? Oh, uh, let's see. Perhaps you should cut him free and get him back to safety, or you can leave him here. Though it's your fault that he's stuck in the mine. This guy's name is literally dumbass, and this is why this is why we're not going to be reading a lot of the quests going forward. It's like the story arcs are okay. Like the story arcs in World of Warcraft are okay. They can be interesting. The lore is great. There's great lore, good world building. Uh, some systems that are pretty well thought out as to how like energies and forces in the world and universe interact. But when it comes to the boots on the ground writing and storytelling and, and especially the quest text itself, uh, it's crap. It's worse than fan fiction in most cases. That's it would be <laughs> some of it is like would be a disservice to fan fiction. Uh, did we let him out? Oh, uh, we have to escort him. Oh God, he's back here getting killed, of course. Oh, I was hoping he would just disappear. But it is an escort quest. They said we had a choice to leave him. I, I didn't really see that, but... Okay, so is he going to follow us? No, he's going to walk his own slow self out of here. Uh, fighting whatever he wants. Oh no, now he is following us. I'm, I'm, he's confusing me. He's sending us a lot of mixed signals. Is he just randomly attacking these guys? Yeah, he is. He could leave them all alone, they wouldn't aggro, obviously, but he is choosing to randomly engage with them. Uh, see his name for an explanation as to why he might do that. He's talking in all caps, of course. Okay, buddy, we hit past that guy. I'd appreciate it if you don't, like, turn around and attack people. That would be great. Now he's literally attacking everybody.
And yes, we just fell through a hole. It was cleverly placed. Wow, yeah, that's great. I'm so happy to see that you were helped out of the mine. Postponing your tragic and inevitable death. Yep. What do you require? Trust no one. Yeah, and that looks like that's going to be it for the Hillsbred Foothills quest. It looks like we didn't have to kill Yetimus, but I, I'm going to go try again. We're going to give it one more shot with some of the tricks that we know now. Again, it probably would have been smart of me just to jump a flight point and run from there. We've still got quite a bit to go on this character, but I have been kind of thinking of what comes next after this playthrough. The way I've been handling these playthroughs is that I've been getting the characters to level 50. I don't have any interest in seeing the Shadowlands content again. And for anybody interested in the Shadowlands story campaign, I do have a full playthrough that I did on a Paladin of the Shadowlands story campaign. Uh, but I don't plan to get a character from 50 to 60, uh, probably until we know when 10.0 is coming out and then I can kind of decide what class I want to take into the next expansion because for me, like many of you probably, Shadowlands is over. I have no interest in playing it. So that's a range thing that just happened. Now we have this guy. Yeah, I'm... I don't think that we're going to be able to get him just because of that punt. What happens is it punts us so far away from our pet that... It, it dismisses the pets, I guess. And then, yeah, he's at full health, so... It's not even an issue of damage, although getting punted into this guy didn't help. I might be able to get the the summon back up in time, maybe, if we use Fell Dom... No, was it Fell Domination? Yeah, Fell Domination, we could... Oh, uh, look, we, we're gonna... And the thing about this is that, like, all this shit over here is gonna respawn. So if he punts us all the way over here again, we're just going to aggro the same stuff that we just fought. Uh, but we're going to give it one more shot. And see if we can get our Felguard out quickly enough to not have the enemy's health go down. That might be a one-trick pony though. We're not going to have Fel Domination up a second time. So yeah, it's going to be a little tricky. It does seem like you need at least one other player to stay engaged uh, with the enemy. And we don't have one other player. Are we ever going to catch him like this? It sure as heck doesn't seem like it. All right. Uh, well, let's let's redo the soul stone here. It's about to run out. And let's just go into it. Maybe if we're up against this mountain, maybe a back to the mountain will help us. Oh wow, he's kind of crushing our, our pet though. Well, I mean, we lived, he's still up. If we can get back in range to heal him, which is not going to happen, I don't think. Oh, there we go. We can do this. He has 1% left. Oh, he's dead. Uh, yeah, he keeps moving out of range. That's not great.
Uh, okay. Let's get in here and do a heal while we still can. Whew, okay, well, I mean, we got him. It wasn't pretty, but we did it. And now we can use our hearth. We don't have to run back, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Humbert, right? I think this turns in right in Terran Mill. Uh, no, it's not to Humbert, but... Death Guard Sam is a... Well, that's good. I feel better about uh, completing that one. Thank you guys so much who kind of give me some tips there about the soul stone and resummoning our, our pet really quickly. Uh, that helped a lot. What is it? Alright guys, that's everything we can do right now in Terran Mill. I think we are going to have to head into Arathi Highlands next. We'll get this quest out of the way. Hopefully it won't be too painful. And we'll see what Arathi Highlands has to offer. I think I'm going to continue doing random dungeons. Let me know how you guys feel about that. But it's kind of something that's really fun for me to break up the questing. Give us a few levels. And get some decent pieces of gear. And do we also get like satchels? Yeah, we get satchels of goods. Here's something that's not from the dungeon. Uh, but it is level 41. And then a ring. Yeah, so we can definitely use some of this stuff. So not a bad idea to do that, even for the gear alone. Let me know you t what you think about it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate all the support that you've shown the series. It does mean the world to me. So take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Azeroth sometime soon. Bye now.